Okay, so the next um, presentation is um, about the DIPF uh, investigations on um, OER infrastructures and as well learning analytics. So it's about the functions and data and what OER infrastructures do and or should offer. Thanks here again to our project team at the DIPF, Henrik Traxler, Silvia Kohlmann and Margrit Berger, and as well to all our students assistants who helped us throughout the years in several studies. So what was the starting point when we started the EduArc project? So we realized, and you realized as well, I guess, OER services are not a default in higher education in Germany and the, the use and reuse um, of OER weren't. However, there were first services established, um, first repositories specifically for higher education. For example, like uh, Ahmed already mentioned, the SOAR, the Hamburg Open Online University or Open uh, RAP from um, the University of Bochum. And so OER yeah, did become more known and there were uh, many um, funding projects um, which were kind of aggregated in this OER info. Um, a service um, hosted at DIPF as well, and um, it was a, a coordination of many OER projects, even higher education. So by now, I guess many lecturers know what open education resources are and um, how they can use them. And luckily as well, um, we have a kind of long metadata standard specifically for higher education um, developed, which we as well, as Ahmed already said, used here for the um, EduArc infrastructure. So what were our questions in EduArc? Um, so we, there, we realized OER was um, not a default, but they um, got more known, but still there are many questions. For example, what is the concept of open educational resources? And with regard to this concept or the idea, what should infrastructures offer to support this idea? of open education resources. Related to this, what are the user practices and how are they using um, OER infrastructures and what do they expect in using them? Another question is what further information can support the sharing and the common teaching and learning? So can we um, make the information we got and the data more beneficial? So our goal was mainly to consider the user perspective on OER open practices, data and infrastructure functions. And we had different approaches. Um, you can call them mixed method approaches. So we did some data analysis on infrastructures, on the functions, um, for example, um, how users tag um, resources here with the relation to the EduTech um, website hosted at DIPF, or the question what data can be applied for learning analytics. And as I already said, what functions do the current ser services offer? But um, as I said as well, the, our user studies and experiments were important to get the user perspective. And here, for example, we did user experience studies um, and how they search um, in repositories or how lecturers describe their own OER with metadata and how they, are, um, how they perceive, for example, the metadata fields of LOM. So these are only examples. And for this upcoming presentation, we will focus on the following. The first is the learning analytics. So what further information is beneficial? And the second is OER, the OER concept and its relation to the quality of infrastructures. Open educational practices are interwoven in a plenum of open educational resources. Oh, that's one. Okay. Um, so OER are structured by a political framing and what I call the model of OER. In other words, the normative idea behind OER definitions and licensing models. OER are structured by a technical framing via digital infrastructure. In the recent years, OER repositories, also called ROER, become a crucial hotspot to provide open learning and teaching objects, make them findable and accessible. OER and the use of infrastructure enable specific construction practices for open learning and teaching objects. One research topic of DIPF was to explore already existing digital infrastructures 
for providing OER and examine their functionalities and users' action capabilities, which enable the reproduction of OER and being part of the transformation process of education via OER. Open practices in education focus on the actions of learners and teachers regarding openness. The sharing and collaborative creation of OER is at the core of such practices. Digital infrastructures do not only provide environments for practices, but reflect the ideas and implications of open practices through the functionalities they offer. In 2021, we analyzed 37 web applications related to German-speaking universities. We distinguished four groups of services explicit labeled OER services, providing resources explicitly designed for education, video platforms providing audiovisual material of different kinds, but including videos for learning and teaching purposes, open course platforms with free complete courses, and open access servers include, but are not limited to open learning and teaching objects. Our investigation discovered four core functions connected with users' action capabilities. The search function enables use and reproduction of OER by bodily search practices interwoven with the digital user interface. The organized function focuses on practices of arranging learning and teaching objects within the web application, for example, via watch lists and collections. The delivery function mostly concerns uploading of material, for example, prefigures user practices via determined license models. And last but not least, the help function is provided via manual pages on the web application by introducing its technical features, legal conditions as copyright issues, and as well explaining OER and license types, OER authoring, and editing options. The help function supports practices of self-information and self-socialization for becoming a competent user of OER services. These four functions enable users to practice cultures of collaboration. Nevertheless, all services show the lack of explicit communication and collaboration functions across users. Out of these insights, we developed an instrument to investigate quality criteria. To ask, what are the quality expectations of our OER users and their perceptions of our OER services? The instrument will be validated in summer 2022. The sample consists of OER OER identified in our EduArc study, focusing explicitly labeled OER services providing user accounts to control our sample. And eventually further studies are needed and will be done in my doctoral project to explore educators' everyday practices with teaching and learning objects and the fit of these practices and the model of OER. Thank you and vielen Dank. At the end of the slides, you will find further literature and licensing information.